Hey guys, welcome back. This is part four of the Q&A video series. Uh, I'm still here sitting on the couch trying to answer you guys' questions in complete ways and 10 minutes on the clock, here we go. Eddie Rosales says, any, <laughs> any advice on getting at women? Kind of silly question, but could be useful, Ben. Big fan and keep up the good work. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, I mentioned in the first video that when it comes to getting at women or the hookup type nature, that's not really something I'm concerned with. It's not really something that I uh, am about, I guess, in my life. So I don't really have a whole lot of advice, but if you're looking for creating some sort of relationship with a person, whether or not it's a woman or a, or, or a guy or whatever, um, the three things that I personally do whenever that's an interest to me is I try to make them laugh, I try to make them think, and I try to make them feel special. If you can do those three things or any combination of those three things, then you have a much better chance at being in their life because the way that you create those connections and the way that you leave a lasting impression on a person is by allowing them to enjoy the time that they spend with you and by making them want to be around you. That's, that's how you get into good, constructive, positive relationships. That's how you build good, positive, constructive friendships and I think that that's, that's really the key. Uh, biggest one is make them feel special and make them think with you. It's, it's one thing to have guys that you hang out with or girls that you hang out with that, you know, the, the relationship you have there doesn't have to be super deep-seated and it doesn't have to be philosophical and deep all the time, but I think it's important if you want to go anywhere with that to have more substance in, in those interactions. So that's just my opinion. Um, if you're trying to get at women, I'm probably not the guy to ask. John Shanko, what type of routine would you recommend for someone who wants to be a cross between a power lifter and a bodybuilder? Assuming that you care about your overall muscular development and strength, my lifts would be as follows, deadlift, squat, bench, 300, 300, 150. Um, so if you want to do both, then pick a rep range in the middle, I'd say. Uh, building, the more muscle you have on your frame, the stronger you have the capacity to be, I guess, is, is one of those things. Um, bigger guys aren't necessarily stronger, but you, when you learn how to use that muscle, when you learn how to fire it in the correct ways, then the more you have to utilize, the better off you're going to be. And so that's why I tend to use more of a, a system where you're not always doing the same thing and following the same principles. You have different sets of it. This is something that I talked with Garrett Blevins about. where, And he did a programming series actually recently where he said, the way you break up your microcycle should be the first part is not very sport specific and it's more hypertrophy and it's more build the muscle, a bigger muscle can be a stronger muscle and so you build that muscle up. In the next one you start getting to some heavier weights. Um, so you're going to bring your reps down a little bit and you're going to build your work volume and your ability to uh, to move some heavier stuff and get your CNS more firing. And then the final stage going into a powerlifting meet is your sports performance. You want to develop your one reps uh, maxes and your ability to <laughs> they're coming for me. Your ability to utilize those uh, those gains that you've made in those other times to improve on your one rep maxes. Um, so if you, I mean, honestly, I think that they go hand in hand. I've been a I've been a poor role model for uh, people who want to try to get big with the powerlifting because I did spend so much time working on just the strength of it. Um, but I think that when it comes for the the waving of your different principles and the different periods that you're using and the blocks that you're using. Uh, you need to just do more than one thing throughout the course of a training cycle, but I think that people get lost and try to do everything at the same time, and that's really difficult to do unless you're very, I mean, unless you're an extreme beginner. So work in a middle, in a mid rep range where you're getting stronger, focusing on hitting PRs, but at the same time incre increasing your calories and gaining weight, you're going to get bigger, and then make sure that you include hypertrophy work on things that powerlifters generally don't care about, your calves and your arms. Um, would be good examples of that. So that's my advice on that. Uh, Kane Walters Rangiti, Rangitihi. Again, I apologize for all the names that I'm going to butcher throughout the course of this evening. Have you ever tried, experimented with unidire unidirectional loading for muscle groups? Chest is primary focus, triceps secondary. Opposed to unidire unidirectional loading for movements, i.e. lockout for primary focus and off the chest is secondary. If so, would did your program um, did you program it into a microcycle? I'm, I think I have a vague idea what the answer is, but I thought I would ask you the question regardless. That is very 
related to the first kind of way that I was trying to explain it. Um, I think that I personally haven't done a whole lot of, of putting body part splits as the primary focus because strength has been the thing that I've wanted the most and that's what I've really pursued to the greatest extent. I'm actually a little bit now going back and adding in more hypertrophy work into my programming to try to get some more muscle development to keep up with the strength that I've been trying to produce. But um, yeah, I think that it totally works and you would microcycle it. I, I think honestly the way you'd want to go about it is do the muscle groups first and then do the uh, do the movement. If, if you're training, like the I'm doing a hypertrophy phase where I'm working on building up my my mass and my my the body and the muscle itself and then I'm going to try to focus it more and more down to the strength and the movements themselves. Uh, if you're trying to stay with the movements year round, like a lot of the reactive training type stuff, um, you would do the movement first and then you could use the unidire unidirectional loading techniques with the muscles as accessory type things. And I think that's more common around, among powerlifters, but that's just my understanding and opinion. So, Avi Knafo. What sort of music do you listen to to pump you up for a workout? Also, what sort of stretches do you recommend for general hip mobility and leg mobility? I answered the stretches one for uh, in a previous video, but I will say again, if you are really interested in improving your mobility to a high extent, you should probably check out Kelly Starrett or Bryce Lewis, some of those guys who do a lot of mobility-focused work um, in their videos and what they're trying to produce. And uh, I do have the one video on my, on my main channel page if you go to the tips, tricks, and techniques one, it's the, I talk about recovery work and I do have a little bit of a hip um, mobility circuit that I used to do and still do on occasion whenever I'm feeling like I'm getting too bound up. Uh, but what sort of music do I listen to to pump me up for a workout? It varies. I am a very positively driven person. There's not a whole lot that I get from uh, anything that's, that's coming from a place of anger or, or that kind of intensity. I think it's harder for me to maintain excitement. I mean, some, some guys really like metal and they like yelling and they like screaming and they like crazy loud things. I like things like, like EDM music, I like club and house music, uh, just because it's positive and it's consistent and it's, it's upbeat. I like up music. Um, sometimes, and more recently in fact, I've been listening to things to try to calm me down, actually. Uh, I want to save those pumped up or excited times for the actual meets themselves. And so I've been trying to calm down more in my workouts and focus more on hitting cues and uh, less about lifting emotionally and relying on my adrenaline to, to bring the strength forward and more about being technically proficient and doing things uh, that way. So it, it varies, but those are generally it. Some sort of calming um, classical music. is. I'm a music major. I've been exposed to a lot of it here in college over my, the time that I've been here. Uh, soundtrack type stuff and uh, symphonies um, I don't know maybe I'll start posting uh, what songs I was listening to on the day in the descriptions of my videos but you guys might be a little surprised because I seriously doubt that you are gonna share the exact same musical taste unless you have the same musical experience and backgrounds that I do which I mean if you do awesome we can be best friends talking about that stuff Andre Jerome Pinto, how do I into cardio and powerlifting? I want to hit them numbers, but I still want to be able to run up, run a sub hour 10k. Okay, so basically, what it sounds like you're asking is how do you um, include cardio into powerlifting? How do you keep your numbers up and still keep your conditioning levels fairly high? Um, there is, I think his name is Alex Faida. I'm not sure. Uh, he is someone that Jason Blaha has mentioned before, and he is runs marathons and half marathons or whatever, and 5Ks, and also competes in powerlifting and bodybuilding. And it, I think for the most part, um, what he would tend to say about that is it's all about your programming and making sure that you're smart in the way you set things up. Uh, you can't do some sort of hardcore intense cardio session right before you go into a hardcore intense leg workout. And you have to structure your programming in a way that you have adequate time to recover in between bouts of different of the same types of stimulus and include that in the rest of it. Your nutrition's got to be on, your sleep and everything's got to be on, and they're, I would venture to say, as strong as he is and as proficient as he is in the running game, you will not be able to get to the best of both worlds by splitting your focus like that. You would have to be more 
more selective in that. I mean, it's kind of the idea of CrossFit, and some people hate that. That's that's your prerogative, whatever. I have nothing against uh, the sport of CrossFit and the idea of it. Um, some of the training practices in local areas and and the class setup. That's a that's a discussion for another day. But as far as the pursuit of not being crazy proficient in any one thing, but bringing up the weaknesses in all these other areas and being a jack of all trades per se, is is more that style. And that's kind of the way they do their programming. When there is programming involved, and there is, they do strength training, and then they do cardio in some sort of metabolic conditioning environment. So they're they're combining the two in the attempt to produce that kind of an athlete, someone who can be very strong and still have a high work capacity as far as conditioning is concerned. So that's how I'd answer that question. It's a little vague because I don't do it myself. I tend to avoid cardio uh, to most of an extent because I just lose weight really quickly when I incorporate that. It's a hard it's hard enough for me to get enough calories in to keep my weight at a higher level and when I add cardio in it's just the amount of food intake I have to do to balance that is more than I am willing to eat um, on a daily basis. So that's my answer to that question. And it looks like we went a little bit over time, but I hope that I answered those questions well enough to make it worth it. So thank you guys again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a like rating, share it with your friends. Stay tuned for the next episode coming out the next time I do not have a lifting commentary or something to post. I want to get these all out and up as soon as possible, but just for the nature of the beast, it'll take the time it takes. And I'm trying to do my best to edit them uh, effectively and appropriately because I don't want to give you guys a bad product. So thanks again, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs>